What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Millionaires to Billionaires podcast show with me and Blake Hahn, your guys' host for today. If you guys, this, if, if this is your first time tuning into the show, Millionaires to Billionaires is here to help you guys excel in your life, help you create your ideal life. We interview successful entrepreneurs, and from time to time, you'll be getting episodes like this with just Blake and I, where we talk about our journey, and we allow ourselves to give you guys some nuggets and some value. That way, you guys can apply it to your guys' life today. Um, today, interesting conversation. I was actually out at um, a lunch event. It is Super Bowl weekend, um, Super Bowl media week. So I went out to an event and this conversation is long due. So I'm excited to bring it to you guys. But an individual had a presentation he was talking about at lunch and he used the word pivot. He actually wrote a book. The book is called Pivot Something. I'll, I'll probably drop it in the description so you guys could go check it out. Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about our journey about pivoting and how important it is to pivot as an entrepreneur um, and not only an entrepreneur, you know, an athlete or a parent um, or whatever it is and whatever journey you're in, you got to understand how to pivot and how to pivot quick and in the right direction. So let's dive on into it. So, yeah. And I think uh, what's cool is we're going <laughs> to dive into what we thought was the right way as an entrepreneur. I mean, how many of you guys hear all the time? You have to have multiple streams of income, seven different streams. Your average entrepreneur has seven different streams of income, right? Yeah. We all hear that. So I know for myself and us, when we got to know each other and understanding it, just getting entrepreneurship, reading books, listening to everybody. Um, all we knew is, is like, man, I guess your, your average entrepreneur has seven different streams of, streams of income. So <laughs> we first, our first thing was like, man, like it's crazy how we didn't just jump to to one thing, but it's like, once we started one thing, then it's like, well, to be an entrepreneur, we needed seven different streams of income and we wanted to have multiple streams of income. So what's crazy is we started launching companies and just trying to figure them out and go at the same time. But it ties into pivoting because going through that, <clears throat> I know Michael says it a lot, but I love it. But it basically what we have went through over the last eight years is basically a life university. And it was crazy. I was actually talking to my, my uh, trainer at the gym this morning. And when he was asking me, he just asked me a lot of questions while I'm working out and everything. And it kind of brought something to me, but you know how we go to, like when you go to college, normally, like, I mean, it's minimum, we call it minimum. Like it's really, but like going to a full university, doing the full, four, like four, four years, years. Yeah. right? Let's call it four. <clears throat> I mean, most on average, probably, I don't even know the statistics, but I would say at least pay minimum of 150, 200,000 plus, right? Correct. Like over the four years. Yeah. Cause it's, it's about, I think minimum. ASU is 40 grand a, uh, a year. So yeah, so, if you call yeah. forty grand a year, at least let's call it minimum one hundred fifty thousand a year to go to college. Yeah, I mean, um, in four years, yeah, if you're doing a basic one, right? Correct. Well, if you think about this, we went through multiple different businesses, over ten of them. But what was crazy is we went through a life university, starting companies and just dabbling into them, going through them, building them and scaling them, and then finding out what <coughs> we like, what we don't like, what works, what doesn't work. Is this yeah. a good business or a bad business, and do we really love it? And all the money, if you go back over eight years, and if we looked at how much money we've put in to over the, all those 10 plus companies, I bet you it's over a half a million plus, probably over actually a million. Actually, I could actually, yeah, it's over a uh, million dollars. In the last 10 years, at least yeah. 1.5 throughout well, all of them in, in general, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, itself, FGM's put 800 into it. So if you even take that and then put all the, yeah, we're, yeah. we're well over 1.5, probably actually 2 million in, yeah. in the last eight years together. So if you think about it, that's our, that was our, our university, but that mm -hmm. was our college funds that we paid for. Yeah. But I would rather pay for, go through all of that stuff and look at it as like there, that was my college, like my four years of university, obviously my, I was, it's eight years, but yeah. it's like crazy when you think about it that way. He's like, man, he's all, but all that money and all the, the lessons you've learned and all the trials and errors you went through, <clears throat> it just made you who you are today. And you went through experiences, which now gave you wisdom. And he's yeah. like, but all of that money you spent was worth it. And that was your life university of going through there. And now we're very clear. We know what we want to do. We know where we want to go. But it's crazy because going through over 10 companies that we have over here on the board, we had to pivot every single one. So which leads into what we really want to talk about today is pivoting yeah. and understanding how to pivot. One thing I heard you say, um, if you are, and I, I want you guys to write this down because this is very powerful whenever you are structuring out your life. The reason why I like the Life University and the reason why I like the route that Blake and I went over the last eight years, as we discuss this throughout the podcast, you're going to notice we had to pivot a lot. And one of the, before I dive into what I'm going to have you guys write down, is some things you have to start 
and there's a book by Dan Sullivan called Who Not How. And it's more about who is gonna help you get there, not how do you actually get it done. And that was a big lesson I learned over the last eight years is we always try to, I, everybody wants to be the smartest person in the room. And at one point I had to realize like, I gotta stop learning because I was learning so, so, so much because I, you know, one person wears all the hats. And so you gotta be able to figure out and direct it to who can help you rather than how do you get it done. But what I want you guys to write down and pay attention to is throughout your experiences, you gotta have, you got four pillars. You could, you could call it four boxes. You could call it a list of four, whatever. So the top two, I'll, I'll, I'll call it a, let's go top two and then bottom two. So the top two, the very first one is things you love and things that you're great at. So you love it, you're great at it. Uh, the second one is you like it and you're good at it. You wanna put yourself in these in life in general. Now the bottom two is you don't like it, but you're good at it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm great at building websites, but I don't like it. That's, that's tier number three. Now the bottom one is you don't like it and you're not good at it. These bottom two is what you should be delegating and to elevate yourself up to the top two, which is what you're good at, what you're great at, what you love and what you enjoy doing. Um, and a lot of those lessons we learned throughout the last eight years through this life experience. Well, yeah. And I mean, I think that's what we found in each other and everything. And you bring something to the table that I don't bring. And I bring something to the table that you don't bring and the skill sets, whatever you want to call it. But I think that's what's made us great business partners together and going through this. And obviously <clears throat> we're still here. So um, I want to say, well, one thing I could, I want to touch into basically the multiple streams of income. So after going through it, we basically figured we were going through all these companies um, and just kind of give you guys some idea of it. We uh, first one was network marketing. Then we, we started a suit line called Han Suits. Then we opened up a gym, a, a, fran a franchise of Snap Fitness. Then we decided to open up and start our own supplement line, which shout had out been to in uh, Peter Totten, by the way. Um, we got to interview Peter Totten, which is the founder of Snap Fitness, long overdue because invested into the Snap Fitness franchise. Great story. We'll dive into that in another episode for sure. Yep, and then from there, basically starting the supplements, having the apparel, doing it out of the gym, and then rolling over to real estate, starting the agency with it, so that obviously now we can start running the agency with our brands and our companies. So it's crazy because you start all these companies, we go through them, but then you, every single one, like we didn't keep all those and maintain all those, so we had to pivot. Um, our first pivot, I want to talk about that one, is um, our main my main stream, and I'll talk more on myself too, but my main stream of income was coming from network marketing at the time, um, which was the first real business slash kind of, I guess, however you want to call it, yeah. organization that I've ever built. And that was my main stream of income. But from that business, the money that I was making, we were able to take that money and invest it into a suit line, invest that into a gym and invest it into a supplement company with apparel. <clears throat> yep. Now that main stream of income basically over over a little bit of period of a time went away and that mainstream of income was what was funding everything funding me to live my personal life and then also all these businesses so it's like what do you do when your mainstream of income is funding everything and all these things that it's funding are not in profit mode yet yeah so once you lose your mainstream of income it's like what do you do next and how do you pivot and i know one of my main like one thing that we had to do was we had to basically put two of the companies on hold which was the suit line and the somewhat of the supplements and basically drive into basically the snap fitness one and yeah. make that a main focus because it was the only one that wasn't just an online business. All the other ones were online businesses. That was brick and mortar. Yeah, yeah. brick and mortar. We had a four year lease on the building that was 70 or $6,700 a month on the lease there. And it just signed a contract. So mainly we had to basically train there and then foot put all of our focus there. So talk about pivoting. <clears throat> I was going to say, I want to dive deeper real quick on the, uh, how built supplements launched because of the gym. Um, when Blake acquired the gym for the first time, it, we discovered after acquiring the gym was it was at a loss. And it was at a loss for the, the previous nine years with the uh, other owner, but the other owner just bought it as an investment but was never present. So he didn't know it was at a loss and he didn't know why. And the reason why the supplement company really came into hand was like pivoting, you know? Okay, we got a gym that's at a loss. We got our members. We're doing all this math. And this is where the entrepreneurship and the creativity really has to come out. So one thing we focused on heavy there was like how, what relates to the gym industry that we could sell out of the gym, generate revenue to make up for the losses on the gym side. And that's how we dove into uh, Built Supplements. So Yeah, and then literally just out of nowhere, started Built, came up with the logo, the name, started doing supplements. We did 
protein. We did BCAs. We did aminos pre-workout. <clears throat> we even had um, fitness gear. Yeah, all the fitness gear and everything. But I would say uh, it was crazy because that's what we pivoted straight to it in the apparel. And then next thing we do is once we get the supplements and we start a, a juice bar. So obviously yeah. everyone f- pretty familiar if you're out here in Arizona, uh, One Stop Nutrition. So what I thought, I'm like, man, well, we have yeah. a gym. Everyone's going to One Stop Nutrition. Why not make our own One Stop Nutrition inside of it? We in-house everything. We use our own <clears throat> supplements, our own protein for the shakes. And then we in-house everything with all the supplements, and we sell all of our supplements out of it. We own everything, and now it's funneling all through in one big thing, and wow. it's all of our money and all in-house. Guys, this this is why it's called the pivot episode. I'm calling this the pivot episode. So st- talking about the nutrition company real quick, we launched the nutrition shop in with a, due to, with a non-compete and talk about pivoting. So the nutrition shop, we actually opened it up uh, by ASU, Mill Avenue, um, all very popular space and everything, but we were doing so good and driving so much traffic, especially when we launched that there was a smoothie shop in the same building at the very, very end who was mad because they seen all the business going up, passing their doors and going to our door. And again, he, he complained to the owner. Um, the owner came to us and he was like, Hey man, like realistically there's not a non there's a non-compete with here now we're protein supplements and they were smoothies they're sugar they're, they're sugar and we're healthy we weren't so. even competing yeah there's they no competition we literally we were literally driving so much traffic and they weren't having it and they're an actual they were a real like they were off the main street of mill we were up behind it we had to you had to, you had to go into a little alley go up to stairs and then go into the back to get to our nutrition shop they're on the main street and we were getting more traffic than they were and it's crazy but I, I totally forgot about that, yeah, bro. Like and, we, to, and, to, and to understand that we got kicked out of that building after we renovated, after we bought all the equipment, after bro. we loaded inventory, everything was loaded up and we were ready to go, then boom, kicked out. So the pivot was now we're going to just build this nutrition shop inside of the gym and we tore down the whole lobby and rebuilt the whole nutrition shop inside of the lobby of the gym. Well, yeah, and you guys, I think about it, it's crazy. Like, we're doing all this at the same time while having all this going on. But <clears throat> I literally was searching, found found one of the offices or one of the spaces that was open, signed a three-year lease on this office, a yeah. three-year lease. <laughs> and we told them what we were doing, supplement company. I mean, that's all I have, selling supplements. And then we were going to literally sell, like, protein shakes out of it. Yep. So <clears throat> that's what it was. Never brought up no non-compete. Sign this thing. Dump all my money into it, remodel the whole inside, literally repaint it, hang stuff from the ceiling, put up new racks, new stuff, like everything. Dump all this money in, have a grand opening, and we kill it. We literally, we what our what our monthly overhead would be, we tripled that in our grand opening day, and we now covered, we had enough money to take care of our, our next three months of bills there at that place. Yep. Literally, we come <laughs> back on Monday. This is just after this. Just think about this. Did that, have a grand opening, come on Monday. Next thing you know, we have a, I have a letter. Literally, it's taped on the thing, and it's in a white envelope. I'm all happy. I'm coming in. Pull up. I take it uh, off, and next thing you know, Noah says that, hey, basically, you guys need to pack up all your stuff, close doors. Um, there's a non-compete involved in everything. Literally, I was like, what the fuck? I call the landlord, and I'm all, you never told us anything about it, this and that. And he's all, oh, well, yeah, there was, but I didn't know you were doing uh, protein and supplements. And I'm all... Well, motherfucker, that's my only fucking business that I have. That's that's exactly what this was. You knew that. <laughs> yep. And then I'm like, but who's the non-compete? And then they go to the smoothie shop. And I'm all, so me and Michael, we go walk over to the smoothie shop and go check it out. Because me and, I mean, we do a lot of our due diligence. We looked everywhere. The reason why we wanted that location is because on Mill Avenue, there was no one that was like a one-stop nutrition on that Mill Avenue. Yep. No one was selling supplements. No one was selling protein shakes, nothing. There was just... That was like a food restaurant. They, they just sold fruit smoothies with it. Yeah. So we go down there. And next thing you know, they're selling these like little pita bread things and just little stuff. And to be honest, it wasn't wasn't that great. It was a whack shop. And then they had just fruit <laughs> smoothies in it. And I walk in and I'm like, literally, I remember looking in there. I'm like, this is who did it? And he's like, yeah. So then I basically, I tell him, I'm like, there's no way around this or this and that. Like, can I go talk to him? And then the landlord's like, at the end of the day, you got to get it out and everything. If you want, you go talk to him. You know me. I'm like, fuck that, bro. We're going to go talk to this motherfucker. Yeah. So I go down there. We we actually got to meet the owners. And I say, hey, what's going on? My name's so-and-so. We're the ones that have that <laughs> the shop upstairs. <clears throat> like, oh, you guys are the ones. And I'm like, hey, I just want to see. Like, I, obviously, you guys are unhappy. And you followed, a, I guess, he basically a, play, a complaint against us with a non-compete. But now I'm looking at what you guys have. Like, we're not the same or anything. I just wanted to know why you guys did that. Yeah. And they basically go to, like, straight tell us. And 
It was just weird. It was just like... And these guys shut down at 2 to 3 p.m. in the afternoon. <laughs> Remember, I, even, they, I forgot they, about that. They, they shut down They open early. up at like 9 or 10 a.m. and then they close down at 2 or 3. So no wonder they're not getting any business. No wonder they're not doing anything. And it doesn't make sense. But yeah, like we're not even doing that. And <laughs> so we go talk to them and... I just remember sitting there talking to them and telling them like how we're not really competing or anything like that and asking them to like, Hey, like let us stay up there and not be a compete and everything. And they would not do it. And then I remember basically saying, Hey, can you guys think about it? Talk about it. And then I'll come back. And basically I think we gave it a week, right. Or a couple yeah. of days we came back, talked to them and then literally like they didn't budge. It was just so <laughs> weird. Like they didn't want, it was just like, it's so crazy. And that's where like competition comes in. And I hate, hate competition, man. Like yeah. we're all, you're trying to do the same thing. And, when there's no real, real competition, that's even worse. But, man, like, we're a whole, we're a supplement company selling protein, pre-workout, BCAs, and, and apparel. And then yeah. we're just, we just made uh, protein shakes at our house so that people could sample it, see if they like it also. So that was also why. And then we might as well sell them. And yeah. they're a whole other thing. It's like its own little tiny restaurant type thing. And then they sell fruit smoothies. Yeah. And they're mad, like, competing. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. One thing uh, a lot of people will ask too is like, how do you brush off the losses? How do you brush off something like that? And a big part of brushing off these, these are, they're big losses. I mean, investing into a whole building, renovating a whole building, that's a big loss. But the reason why we're, someone like Blake and I are able to brush it off so easily is because we know we have a bigger vision and we talk about it and we say it a lot, but the vision doesn't come in, you know, all at once. So we don't know what it is, and we're on that process of checking off those four tiers that I talked about at the beginning. Do we like it? Are we good at it? Do we not like it? Are we not good at it? Do we, you know, and throughout this process, we're able to figure all this out and how long we're willing to commit to a specific business that aligns with our true vision. But again, we have a vision. It just, the clarity wasn't there yet at this time. So just trying to figure what did we out. do? We pivoted, started another business. Literally. And what was crazy is I wanted to talk about, we brought in, we actually hired, I remember hiring lawyers. Yeah. I hired lawyers, literally two of them to come in and just make sure, because I was so mad that I dumped so much money into it, had a grand opening. I'm excited to be on Mill Avenue <laughs> and now everybody knows about it. And we, we like, we blew it up on our first day of opening. So yeah. I'm like, man, I'm like, I don't want to just like shut down. And I'm like, I want to at least fight this as much as I can. And then basically, long story short, hired these guys, put more money into it. And then there you go. We had to shut down and everything. So literally with only having a grand opening day and one week <clears> in that business and that office space, we literally had to shut everything down, move everything out and put it all back. So yep. it was crazy. Yeah. Cause basically from that point <clears> forward, that was everything just we we're. Yeah. From there, what's nice with built supplements is the thing is if you do right business, if you do good business, it'll last for a long time. And that business was literally able to last until the last product was sold on the website. And then we shut down the website. So we kept customers coming back and coming back and coming back to at least clean out the house, which was, which was nice at least. Yeah. Cause I was going to say basically supplements and everything, all that was involved. And we still had the, it still had the gym at the time. We were just opening up a, a nutrition shop on Mill Avenue while still having the gym. Yeah. Correct? Yep. Yep. What yeah. I, I was going to say, um, another pivot to that came up is um, it, within this journey, there's times where we've lost everything, uh, you know, together and we're trying to figure it out. So I pick up an opportunity. I'm just over here on social media, DMing investors, finding investors for different projects that we're working on at the time. And in this time, I'm running an agency. That's my main stream of income. Um, before I met Blake and during I, while I met Blake and all that, that's how I was just running. I was social media management, website development, things like that. So I picked up an opportunity from an investor in Miami to say, hey, I'll invest into your agency, but it has you have to be in Miami. So I was like, all right, perfect. Give Blake a call. And at this point, too, I think we've lost everything because I packed up and I, I shipped all my stuff to my mother's house. That was right after all that stuff. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It was. No, that makes sense. So actually, um, I was just sorry. I was just thinking about it because I was like, man, like we we went to Mill Avenue. We started the supplements and all that stuff. We started the supplements, did, or we know we opened the gym and then started the supplements. Right? Yeah, you had. Then the, we opened you, up the shop on Mill Avenue, but then because that got shut down right away, we had all that money and like the whole thing. So then we basically then took that and then we pivoted and moved the moved the whole nutrition shop from Mill <coughs> Avenue into our gym. Yeah, that's what we did. Moved it into the gym, and then now we—that's what pivoted us into there. And then, so basically, 
That's what it was. I was like, why? Because yeah. how did we get the nutrition shop inside the gym? But it's because we struck, we opened up on a mill that shut down. Then we pivoted, but we had all this equipment, everything like a full sinks, all of it, blenders, everything you could think of, cups, straws. So then we're like, well, why not put it inside the gym? And then we had to remodel a little piece inside of our gym to add that in there and get everything in. And then that's when we set <clears> it in there. Now we had the nutrition shop inside the gym. And then that was actually going pretty good and everything. So all of our members that were coming through, they could get a protein shake on their way out or before they can get a pre-workout scoop for a dollar and all yeah. that stuff. So it's just crazy, like having to pivot and figure it out and not just giving up and everything and seeing where can you take this and still utilize these, these, these things that you already bought and put into place. Yeah. What do you think your biggest lesson was um, or has been from being able to understand how to pivot maybe it's not the right direction you're pivoting in maybe it is but being able to understand when is the right time like dude we got to just shut this shit down and we got to do something i don't know what it is but we got to do something what what instinct comes to you whenever you have to kind of pivot in a new direction i don't know but what's crazy is my mind never goes to like just giving up and quitting i don't know why but like i don't know i'm just a type like i especially in certain situations it's not that i want to prove <clears throat> people wrong or anything but it's like a more of a thing like when things like that happen and they weren't clear and i knew i did my due diligence it's more of like it, it's like a fire that gets lit under you that, well it's it's, you're, it's mainly proven to yourself more than anything yeah well it's like it's like because you know what you're capable of doing and you know like you i don't know just something in you a burning desire knows that you want to go create something and you want to become successful and you want to be able to do that. You want to build a brand, a company, right? And I just knew that's what I want to do, but I wasn't, I wasn't, I don't know, something to me that just, it wasn't, <clears throat> no one's going to stop me from doing it. And it always felt like it was something, but I don't know. It's just like the, to answer the yeah. question, it's like, I don't know, I just pivoted. It was just like, it's like weird, but it's like, no, like I'm going to figure this out. I don't know. It's just always like, I'm going to figure this out. And then it was just, once we got a taste of it and we knew it all, because if we speed everything up, so the supplements, once we got the, the, uh, we lost the the office on Mill Avenue and then we went to the gym. Now everything was in one central location. So now at this point, at one point we had just snap fitness. We had built supplements with all the protein pre-workouts and all that, our supplement line with the apparel. Yeah. And now we had the nutrition shop inside of the gym too as well. Yeah. So if you guys think about it within that snap fitness, we have the members, which is a stream of income. The supplements is a stream of income. The apparel was a stream of income. And then now the nutrition, the, the shakes and everything was a, another stream of income. So we figured out how to find four or five streams of income within one within one business, one brand, everything under one one hood, if that makes sense. Yep. And I think that's when we started to understand that you almost don't got to have a full multiple different companies. And that's when it started to click is that you could have <clears throat> one company or one brand or one housing. And yep. then you could have, you can make money within multiple different ways within that one main thing, that Absolutely. main foundation, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, if you heard him correctly, if you're an entrepreneur and you get caught up in this, this shiny pen, penny syndrome and you want to do all these different businesses, because we'll, we'll name drop a couple more businesses that we've did all at the same time, by the way, because every entrepreneur needs seven streams of income. That's what we hear. But when I come to discover, you know, from business mentors and uh, strategic partners and stuff like that is, no, you need to find your core value. There's a book call, uh, called The One Thing by Gary Keller. And he talks about focusing on one thing till that one thing pops off, then invest everywhere else. Now, inside of that one thing that you're doing, that's where you need to discover where your seven streams of income are at. And that, you know, he broke it down with the gym. We had four streams inside of the gym. That's what you're supposed to do. Then once that pops off, then now you can div diversify into other avenues and other industries to really have that seven streams of income from other industry sources. But you want to focus on that one company for sure. Man, and I'll be honest with you, if I give any advice to anybody wanting to start a business or just get in entrepreneurship and, and want to do something and take off and become successful is do exactly that. Stick to that one thing until that one thing takes <clears> off or it goes away and then move to the next thing. But don't try to do two, three, four, five different companies or five different things, man. My mentor told me it, and I could say it, man. I'm Brandon Williams. This one's for you, brother. You told me a lot. You said stick to this one thing until it takes off and makes you a million, and then go do multiple things. And as a young kid, and me just wanting to run and not really listening, and that's just me with my knowledge and not understanding. Yep. I didn't. I didn't want to do that, and that was me. And I, I thought I could. I'm like, I could do this, this, and this, and I could do them all at once. And then I'll delegate and this and that and blah blah blah. But for some reason, it wasn't clicking because he was telling me to do that. And I didn't want to because I understood that the average entrepreneur had seven streams. So if I only had one, I didn't feel like I was an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. 
that's like on some real shit. Like I really thought that, but yeah. I was young. I was 21 years old at the time. I didn't know anything, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I hop into this space of entrepreneurship and it's like, it's all clicking and I'm starting to read books and this and that. And then I hear all these people talking. So yeah. I think that was like the biggest thing. And I, I would really recommend it because we've caught ourselves up even a couple <clears> of times, <throat> even in the last couple of years is we get so excited because we know we can do these things within this one brand but it's like, no, we need to stop doing that or st stop. It's like focus on the main thing and everything until that one thing takes off and then go back and then you could start diversifying all of your money into those companies and then running them all because then you have the money and the yeah. time to delegate and, <clears throat> and hire people to run and do those companies and be the visionary from the top. So It allows you to focus whenever you're doing that. I have, um, there's a three-step process I could give you guys. And one of the step one of that process is get serious. So if you find yourself, if you're somebody, you know, listening to this podcast and you find yourself being the black sheep of the family, right? Or the black sheep of your friends. And you know, it's you, if you're listening to the podcast, you know, it's you that like, you don't know what Blake said it earlier, um, why he doesn't stop because he wants to build something great. We want to build something great. You know, you want to build something great. You just don't know how or what the fuck you're going to do. Well, Step number one is just get serious first. And part of that getting serious is make sure you are serious about your goals, your vision, your journey. And if you have to bring it up to every, every friend and every family member now ahead of time. So that way, whenever you're pursuing those things, they know why you're pursuing it and they're not interrupting you. You might get some negative feedback. It's okay. You told them what you're going to do and just stay focused and committed. Um, that's getting serious. Step two would be get smart. So whatever it is you want to do, now you got to study that. If you're going to do real estate, you better study the fuck out of real estate until you get smart into it. And that's going to help you. So if you're serious, now you're going to get smart in that area. If you're a website developer, well, you better study every terminology, every how to build websites, every, the coding, all that type of stuff. So step one, get serious. Step two, get smart. And then step three which it's, you know, you got to go step by step. A lot of people don't reach step three, which is get going. So you have to get going and you have to take action. And that's where a lot of this pivot comes in is just that's as soon as one thing fails, we don't look at it as a failure. We look at it like, a dang, that's a lesson. We got to pivot and we got to, we got to understand how that is a lesson though, because if not, we will make the same mistake twice, which we've had multiple times. But if you, sit back and you're able to say, okay, thank you. That happened. How can I reflect on this? And then now that you learned your lesson, now you could take that and apply it to your future business. Yeah. I think one thing that was key for me that kept me going during all of those times and losing everything and having to pivot so many times was writing down <clears throat> my goals. Mm. And I always knew that I'm, 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 I'm placed here to do something great. And I know I have a, a major calling. I never knew what it was at the time. I now know what it is. But at that time, I didn't know what it was, but I could feel that burning desire in me. It's like, I know I'm supposed to do something great, and I know I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be somebody. I've, I have a higher calling. I just don't know what it was yet. And mm -hmm. I wrote down my goals, and goals is what kept me going and everything because that's where it was like, man. And how I looked at it and started to look at it is like, as these things were happening, before I looked at them, I would get pissed and like, why is this happening to me? I got all these goals I want to accomplish, and why does all these bad things keep happening? <clears throat> yeah. And it wasn't bad things happening to me. What it was is it was things that God or the universe was putting in front of me to go through that are lessons that were supposed to make me the man I am today and also take me through these lessons so that I can learn and grow into the person I'm supposed to be, which is now and now yep. stepping into that, 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 you know, what I'm saying that ownership and owning who I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. But yeah. I think a lot of people that don't write down their goals and don't have a vision mm. when they go to start something new, that's why they give up so quick is because they don't have anything that they really want and they don't know what they want and they don't have a path or a vision and a roadmap of their life of where they're going to go. So it's easy to give up and, and, and to just pivot to just going back to just, you know what, this isn't going to work yeah. out. I'm maybe not that person. I'm just going to get a normal job and just live life. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I believe those goal, goal writing will lead you to the true seven streams of income or more, you know, cause it could be 50 streams, you know, d depending how far you want to excel, but writing down those goals gives you a life roadmap. So that way, if you do focus on that one thing, now one by one, you can slowly involve real estate, slowly involve tech investments, slow, you know, and start moving up the ladder of investments and stuff like that. Um, the goal writing, big, uh, big thing um, and keeping you going, you said learning lessons. For example, with the Built Nutrition Shop, 
we had to close down shop due to a non-compete. Well, now that was a lesson to get you to the next level because now we have to make sure we have non-competes in everything we do to be very specific. Or if we're going to get into a business and we're going to bring on partners, we got to make sure there's no non-competes everywhere. I talked to my attorney and the first thing he says is, all right, let me research this company. Say I'm uh, need to talk to our business attorney about a specific company. He goes, first, let me research this company and make sure they're not one of my clients so I can't do so not, some non-compete stuff. So now that's a lesson that will forever apply to our business and allow us to keep growing. So there's lessons in every failure. Every You're like, what the fuck, God? This like, why me? Why me? It's like, Meant chill out, that. Supposed chill to out, that. figure out why. You know, and keep applying it to, to the next one. Well, now that we're talking about lessons, I just want to talk about my first one. I started my <laughs> first uh, company in 2013. It was called Treat Skateboard Wax, and I did it with one of my, my best friends. And all we did was <laughs> we went down to downtown Phoenix. We came up with a name. We went to downtown Phoenix. We did an LLC, and we put both of our names on it and 50-50 owner on it. That's it. We obviously got an EIN number. We opened up a bank account. And I put my funds in there. He put some of his funds in there. And then we started this apparel company, right? Long story short, my first lesson learning in that, and that was at the age of, I think I was 21, maybe 22 at that time, but this is 2013. And uh, basically, long story short, I wake up one day and everything is swept from under me. Bank accounts, social media, everything. And I get a message basically saying, hey man, basically you're oil to water this company, this and that, you can't be the face, blah, 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 and all this stuff, right? basically dipping out on me on our company. Mm -hmm. Well, that was my first lesson I learned. And what I learned in that lesson is I called, I got my aunt had a friend that basically was a lawyer. So once she found out what happened to me, I got on the phone with the lawyer and then I go first, basically she says, so what documents and what contracts do you have in play? I said, we went down to downtown Phoenix and we put an LLC. I'm 50, 50 on that. She's like, okay, is there anything else? I said, no, we're 50, 50. Like I own half of that. She goes, okay, but like, there's no like operating agreement or like an ownership agreement saying that you own like 60, he owns 40 or like saying that he's like, he's the CEO and he runs this and then you're this, here's your task and here's your job and here's what you're supposed to do. And I said, no, she's all, I'm like, why would I need that? She goes, because that's the only way I can go fight for you. She's all, all you have is just an LLC that says both your names on it, 50, 50, and that's it. Nothing else, Blake. And I go, yes, she's all, you have no, there's nothing you can do. Yep. Damn. And I swear, I remember sitting there like my gut, everything dropped. Like I just, and that's like, that was my first lesson. And that's why ever since then moving forward, I'm like, man, I will put everything on paper. I'll put everything in contracts and I am never, ever going to go 50, 50 with anybody again. Yeah. Like, a business isn't meant to be 50, 50. No, dude. You, like, you have to be 51, 49 at the closest. Yeah. <laughs> and, and obviously I've learned my lessons and honestly, that's why I went into a lot of my businesses as, as 100% ownership of myself. And my name's the only one, the entity and all that stuff to protect myself. Because again, it's like when you know, you want something and you know that you're going to be great and you just don't know what that looks like. And you have a calling, but you have this ambitious that you want to go do something and you're never going to give up. It's like, I know that no one's going to stop me and I'm going to, I'm going to become who I want to become no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't want to have anybody else play a part in that and hurt me from doing that again. And that was my first lesson that I learned. And that's why every time moving forward, I make sure that there's a contract in play. We put stuff on paper and there's something because I want to watch my ass and protect, uh, protect me from ever losing that again. Could I have you speak on another, another great lesson in pivoting is when you feel that there's friction. So I want you to touch a little bit on it because you're, 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 it's heavy when you explain it. So just, just go ahead and explain your part on that. So uh, obviously Bob Proctor says it very great. And that's honestly where I got it from. And I believe it's in the book, Change Your Paradigm, Change Your Life. Yes, it is. And what Bob Proctor talks about is when you get into a business and when you go into a business and it doesn't even have to be fully with a partner, but most of the time it's what it's mainly <clears> for. But if you go into business with a friend, anybody, but just someone like a partner's with you on it. Yeah. Now, when you go into business with someone and as you're starting to grow that business or build the business or build a company, there's either two things when you're going that you're going to, everything's going to flow, right? Feel good. And you're going to feel on the same frequency and the energy's right. And everything's flowing. And if everything is moving and flowing how it's supposed to, or it's going good, that means it's meant to be. You're in alignment. You're in alignment. You're on the same page. The universe is, 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 is your, what you're putting out is correct. What you're putting out, you're getting back. Yeah. Now <clears throat> the other part is if you start to feel friction, so then you're feeling friction, like, 
you and your business partner, like it always seems like you guys are thumping heads or just doesn't feel good. Every meeting, you don't feel like you're getting anywhere or you start to go a couple meetings in and all of a sudden it gets bad and you're not going. And then never after that, and when you're trying to correct things in the proper way, which you know how they're supposed to, but things are not getting better and you still feel that friction, that's when you know that something's not right and you shouldn't be doing either that business or you shouldn't continue to keep going. And Bob Proctor says it great. He's like, something's not right about this. And when you feel it and you start to feel friction within mm -hmm. you and that business and that partner or whatever it is, then you need to put a stop to it because if not, it'll just eat you alive and drain you. And yeah. he literally did. He's like, we have this business and everything, but it's something's not right and it's not feeling good. And Bob Proctor says, he's like, I got to call him, my business partner, and I got to let him know, hey, man, we need to stop what we're doing. Something's not right. Like we, like there's, I'm feeling friction. Yep. So I really think that's very key in a business and understanding. And also that's why you got to watch who you go into business with as well as, <clears> man, <throat> like if you're feeling friction, then there's something going on. Maybe that's not meant to be and it. You're forcing something that's not supposed to happen. And that's the beauty of paperwork. Because, hey, sometimes you do go into business with somebody you don't know very well. You know, they say who they are, you say who you are, and you guys agree. As long as that paperwork's in place, you guys are good to go because at the end of the day, that business could shut down the correct way rather than getting, you know, things swept out from underneath you. Well, yeah, and it's crazy. I mean, you hear everyone say it. I mean, people come into your life for, for a reason, for a season or a lifetime. And yeah. I really, I believe in that now that I've been... Yeah, I graduated high school in 2012. I've, I've now been outside of school as a, a grown adult for 10 years, a full decade. So wow. I can now actually speak on that. And it's crazy because I now see it and know it <clears throat> and you're aware of it. And when someone, man, you got God's going to bring people into your life literally for a season, for a reason or a lifetime. And it's crazy because like I told you the other day, I'm like, we're eight years in now. Yeah. This is a lifetime. If it was for a season or for just a reason, you'd already be gone and we wouldn't be in, we wouldn't be here together. We still wouldn't be doing business together. Correct. But it's crazy that I look at it and all the businesses we've been through and gotten to this point, man, there is people that have came in and out of every single business for a reason or a season and not a lifetime. Yeah. And I think when you're aware of that and you understand it, you're going to know, but <clears throat> that then ties back into the, to the frequency. Like yep. you'll know it and you'll feel it, man. If like the energy is good and you and your, the, whoever you're doing business with, is on the same frequency. You guys feel it. You're clicking. Everything's going. It's smooth. Don't get me wrong. You're. It's not. It's not supposed to be like that forever. But you're going to have arguments. You're going to have little heated <clears throat> moments, and you're going to have that stuff. I'm not saying it's all perfect. Right. But you know what? It, like you'll know what you know. If yeah. that, your gut's going to tell you like something's off. Something don't feel right. Like I yeah. shouldn't be doing this. Like you're going to feel it. So really, just understand that because it ties right into that and. It's crazy because I didn't I didn't understand that and really believe it. And as I'm reading and I'm getting older, and then I'm ten years in, now I look back and I'm like, damn that that uh, that saying or that quote is it really is real. Like, yeah. and obviously I hear it from a lot of older successful entrepreneurs that have already been doing business for over twenty years, thirty years, forty years. So yeah. when now that they're saying it, and then now I'm I've done lived my ten years. I'm looking back. I'm like, man, that's right. Like, and then it's crazy because I'm looking at some of our companies and some people that came in. They actually came in for just a season or a reason. And now I'm looking back and it was, it was for a little growth. It was for us to help us, help us get further, <clears throat> further. And then they were out and everything and it's crazy and it just taps in, but yeah. you never know. And it's like understanding and knowing the <clears throat> difference between those two things that it, it'll, it's very key in business. Yeah. And I think whenever you're building relationships in business, a lot of it has to do with one self-awareness and outside awareness of what, you know, being able to read people the correct way, being able to understand people's um, egos the right way. Cause we all have egos. We just know we, you know, some of us know how to control our ego more than others. And whenever you get into business or whenever you just in life in general, when you're going through life, you might have a best friend in high school that, you know, you guys, I'm sure we all have, uh, people in high school that were like, ah, oh, we're going to be friends for the rest of our lives. And sure enough, five years out of high school, you, you guys don't even talk to each other. A lot of us, but all of us, a yeah. lot of that, you know, everyone has life going on. So can't judge them there. But at the same time, when somebody comes into your life, understand what their assets are, their life assets are. You know, sometimes people will come into your life just to be a good friend. That's okay. You don't need to force a good friend to go into business with you mm -hmm. and being able to understand that too. Because I got a lot of people that I would love to be your friend, but I won't do business with you. And then I got a lot of other people that I'm going to do business with you, you know, and we're going to pursue other things 
But, you know, then you got to be careful of friends and family. It's just a whole, you know, yeah. lot of journey stuff that you got to take care of. But you got to be self-aware of what you're looking for. Um, and if you're looking for the right things uh, for your focus, then now you got to find that in every single person and make sure they're an asset to your team and not, you know, not an asset tearing you down. Well, yeah, and I think, like, <sighs> it, where I'm at today and understanding and, and looking back, and now I'm literally understanding and reading the, the – um, the main book that's really just opened me up and becoming aware of just everything, how I think, the patterns, and how we act, and how we do things, and how we think, um, is breaking the bad habit of being yourself by um, Dr. Dr. Joe, Joe Dispenza. I mean, I yeah. love it. Shout out to you, bro. I cannot wait to have you on our interview. So yes, um, that book has changed my life, and what I'm starting to understand right now <clears throat> and today, 2023, I now understand and look at people differently. And what I mean by this is now when I look at people and how they react to things they do, all I understand now is like the way they're doing, they're acting, talking, or how they react to things yeah. is just all due to their past experiences and how they grew up and then, and it's all they know, but that's their thoughts. But here's one thing I can tell you is whether it's friends or business, mainly business because man, business like, Friends is friends, but business, you don't want to lose money and just continue to lose money and lose money and lose money and lose money, right? So your biggest thing is, is what you got to understand is when you're looking at it and if you do go into business with that friend or anybody, I'm just talking about anybody, yeah. what you have to be aware of are those patterns. And the reason why is because it's okay for someone to act the way they do, to react the way they do and to think the thoughts that they think. And even if it's all bad, because it's how they were raised and how they came up. But here's what's not cool and, and not right is for them to continue to act that way and not make a change in their life yeah. and everything. And when you see that they're doing the same thing over and over again, making bad decisions and bad choices, mm -hmm. it's like, how can you, can you trust and know that that person is actually really wanting to become a better version of themselves and actually get to where they want to be? Because we yeah. all want that for each other. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But the biggest thing is, is how many of you really want it for yourself? Mm. And when you really look yourself in the mirror and find that out and ask yourself, I mean, you got to answer that question yourself. But my biggest thing that I've now learned and come to see, and I wish I learned this a while ago, <clears> but I'm just, it's my part of my journey and my story, but I'm just now learning it is, man, I'm very aware of that now. Like when I'm, when I'm, when I, when I get to meet someone new or go into business with someone new, I see how they act. I'm aware of their patterns, how they think, how they react to things and the things that they do and how they talk. Yeah. Now, after, after I know that, let's say if it's bad, some things are in this and that. Now, what I'm watching for is I'm aware to see if they're making a change and they're becoming a better version of themselves and trying to not be that same old version of themselves that's m putting them where they're at or doing the bad things that they're doing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, there's a, there, now, I got a story for that. Go ahead. Yeah, and then basically stepping <clears throat> into it. But let's say you got this, that you, you get into business with someone and because I, I could even talk on it with me and you, mm -hmm. but we have so many bad habits and bad traits of things that we brought to the table when we met each other eight years ago. Yep. And I'll be, my biggest one is partying. And it's like, it's, it's, it's my environment before I'm around, but we party yep. and drink and like, it was every week. And like, that was a cool thing, man. Like, and all summer, everything. Right. And it's like, I'm like, man, like I can't, there's things that I do and, and how I even say, and I talk and I'm like, man, I got to change these things. And you see me progressing. Yeah. Like, it's funny, like the biggest things is words. Like every time I'm around you, like I got a radar in my head that says like, <laughs> you got to watch what you say when you're around Mike and yeah. it's good though, but it's helping me. Yeah. And I understand that. It's like, I always like to say, bro, you're killing it. And you're like, no, you're not. You're healthy or yeah. it's you're, healthy you're or bringing it to life. You're bringing it to life yeah. or words are powerful guys. Yeah. Like, oh bro, like I'm weak as fuck right now. Like laughing. Like no, you know, everybody strong. says that. It's like, no bro, you're strong. Like our words are so powerful and that's what's cool. And I like, that's what's honestly like with our relationship is like, we both can call each other out, but also we check each other in a way because all we're trying to do is help each other become the best versions of ourselves together and figure this thing out. Yep. It's like everybody else, man. We're all trying to figure this out, this life, this, whatever <clears throat> it is, this journey and find out what our calling is. But yeah, just to go back to that, man, I think it's really just understanding, but you got to be aware of when you're doing business with someone aware of their patterns, how they act, the things they do and all that stuff. And are they, are they progressing and, and getting better? Yeah. And are they trying to get rid of those old habits and that old person or that old version of themselves and be trying to become a new one? And if they're not, hey, man, like it is what it is, but it's hard <clears> to go into business and stay in business with someone that doesn't want to actually become the best version of themselves. Yeah. And I've been in business with multiple people over and over again. My first one in 2013 lost my company with that one. 
And then second one, um, when we, uh, the Snap Fitness franchise, oh. basically long story short, I had a business partner in there. We weren't fully 50-50 on that one. I did that a different way. But basically long story short, come to find out, he was, he was basically back ending all of my customers and double tapping them and double charging my customers. And I had to find out through there and he was double hitting all of our customers. Long story short, that put a big hurt on our business. And then yeah. that came from there. So it's like, I have had multiple partners <clears throat> and all of these things that I went through and these lessons I've learned is now what's ingrained in me and it's in my gut and it's weird now because my gut literally talks to me. Yeah. And I could sit there and I can meet someone going to business with someone and I could see someone and because of doing door-to-door -door sales over the last eight, nine years, it's also taught me how to read people and look at people and understand people. Yeah. And it's crazy because my gut will tell me things and I know you probably, I see a lot of like, hey, yo, my gut's telling me, I don't know, something's off with this. And then sometimes yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, I don't know, but my gut says, let's move forward. Uh, and I, I say it a lot yeah. and it's like, but I had to go through sure. this far. I had to get to where I'm at, but it's going through all those lessons that now made me who I am. But now I'm understanding and I'm aware of those patterns, those things and everything in a person and how they think and why they think that way and, the, and why they do what they do. Yeah. So. There was a <laughs> shout out to Brandon Williams. Back to another lesson with uh, network marketing and stuff. But this is a lesson, one, to ask yourself, are you someone that's willing or are you needy? And... um. You gotta be, if, if you wonder why, why doesn't nobody wanna work with me? Well, it's cause you're a needy person. Now, if you wonder, wanna know why everybody wants to work with you, it's because you're willing to get shit done. So you gotta define that between yourself. Who are you? Are you a needy person or are you a willing person? And now on the other side, you gotta also look at yourself and say, am I gonna give, myself, give people attention that are willing to put in work? Or am I willing to give people attention that just need you know, my attention? And you got to be able to separate the two and being able to build an organization. We scaled that organization 6,000 in six months. And one lesson I really learned was working with the willing, not the needy. And if you take somebody, I'm talking, we, we helped a lot of people make a lot of money with no education. And if you take a bum and we put him in our organization one month later, you will see if that person is a willing person or a needy person and how an environment will make a shift. You could take somebody that has run down clothes, um, you know, lives with their parents still, doesn't really have a job, doesn't even have a car, show up to an event with you and be with you and your organization for a month. And all of a sudden he's walking in with a suit, chest high and everything. Maybe he couldn't even afford the suit. Maybe you helped him make money so he could go buy the suit. But now they carry themselves differently and that's huge on environment. So if you're also wondering why you're not progressing in certain areas or why you can't pivot the right direction is because you might try to make a pivot and you're running into these friends over here that are, t that are you know, telling you something. Or you try to make a pivot over here and you got running into families here trying to make a pivot over here and your coworkers here. So there's always somebody around you trying to stop your pivot. And you got to make sure that whenever you pivot, you're confident in the direction that you want to go. Yeah. Um, that's on point. And I want to touch on some, cause as you were saying, it's just, it's bringing a lot of thoughts back, but I want to, I want, I want to let you guys know one of the mistakes that I made, um, starting my entrepreneur journey and getting into it. And then I want to tell you my biggest pivot that I, I had to, I had to go through. That's now gotten me where I'm at, but my biggest thing and what I think a lot of you guys should focus on is not what the outer world is looking at you as, and you don't have to have that image to get where you want to be. Let me give you an example. When I started, don't get me wrong, like still to this day, I still want them, but I want the Lamborghini. I want the Rolls Royce calling in. I want the private jet. That's mine with our logo, our brand on it. I want the mansion. I want the house, the penthouse, the yacht. I want all those things. I want to travel the world. I want to experience yep. life. I never want to have to look at a price tag. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want all those things still today. But let's backtrack. And if I go back eight, nine years ago, when I was just <clears> getting <throat> an entrepreneurship and understanding what this is like, see, where I went wrong and I lost a lot of money and wasted a lot of time is I thought that I had to play the part and look the part for people to want to do business with me to then blow up and take my businesses to the next level. So I was out trying to buy, basically, and it's funny, Larry Smith taught me this one, you're broke on a higher level. Yep. And it's crazy because I went from making basically 2,600 a month to $10,000 a month. Well, I was still broke just on a higher level. But because of that, I basically, what I started doing is I went and bought a nice car. Then obviously payment went up. Now I got this nice car, it's, there's my image. Yep. 
And then basically mm. now all these clothes, the Ferragamo. I remember I, I, I literally went to the mall and I had two of my buddies with me and I went and bought a $980 Ferragamo belt. And I thought I was cool because I'm like, man, like this is one check and stuff. The belt, the suits, everything. Not only that, let me take you to the next one, the penthouse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I went and got a penthouse and signed a year lease on this penthouse that was $5,400 a month for my lease. But I wanted to look the part. It was at the top of the building at 44 Monroe in downtown Phoenix. And I'm like, man, well, if I got the car, I got the suit, I looked apart and I got the penthouse and I started my business, like everyone's looking at me like, well, this guy's like, I believe him and I trust him. That's really what I thought it was. And, yeah. and I thought more people would want to do business with me and take me serious. That was wow. how I really was thinking, but I didn't know I was doing it the wrong way. Then I went and got another penthouse after everybody pivots and all that stuff and organization starts to tank under. And then I start losing my mainstream of income and network marketing. Then I go to another penthouse. This one's a two story penthouse. Then I upgrade and now my rent $6,400 a month. Mm. I signed another year lease on this thing. So it's like crazy because I was chasing this image of look, wanting to look and play this part so that people would like me and do business with me. And I was doing it backwards the whole time. That's why I lost thousands of dollars. That's why yeah. I set me back so many years. That's why I lost so much time. And that's why I attracted the wrong people into my life. Yeah. That is my biggest lesson I've <clears throat> learned. And what's crazy is from that, my biggest pivot was just think about doing all of that, making over $50,000 a month, living in the penthouses, having the nice cars, having the suits, doing whatever the fuck I wanted, flying around the country to then losing everything. Yeah. And when I say everything, I had to downgrade into an apartment. I was getting eviction notices. I even got my truck repossessed. There's a lot more stuff we go into. I got it back, though. Talk about that pivot. We'll get into that another time. But I had to basically I lost everything. <clears throat> my biggest pivot, pivot, just think about going from all this and being on social media and showing all this. And every day you wake up and pounce on this stuff. And basically, I lost everything and I had no choice. I remember that one day I literally had to pick up the phone and I had to call my Aunt Carrie and she lived in Buckeye at the time. And I said, hey, you have an extra room. Can I come move in with you? And I had to move all the way from this image and being this person playing this part and having to humble myself yeah. and move all the way out to Buckeye, Arizona, the boonies, <laughs> California, for some of you that would call it way out of nowhere. And now I had to move in there and basically restart over. Yeah. And just think about this. I was known Blake Hahn was the guy that Network marketing business, Han suits, supplement company, owning a gym, in penthouses, got the nice vehicle, traveling the world. So now you live at your aunt's house out in, in Buckeye with no companies? You know, Talk about a pivot. <clears throat> now yeah. check this out. What I had to do is before that to get to the penthouse and to start, before I started network marketing, I was doing door-to-door -door sales. That's what got me to there. Well, once I got into the penthouse and started network marketing, I stepped away from door-to-door -door sales and started pursuing my own dreams as an entrepreneur with network marketing, the suits, the gym, and everything, correct? Well, guess what? After I lost all that and everything, I had to pivot, and then I had to save my gym and keep that going because I was in a four-year lease. Yeah. And if I basically like had to just like give it up, I would have been over $250,000 in debt to them and that would be on my credit report and I didn't want that. So talk about a yeah. crazy pivot. I had to pivot and go back to knocking doors. Something I really didn't want to do, but that was the only thing I knew and the only way I could make money fast. Yeah. And I went back to knocking doors selling security. But what I did know is with security that every deal I'd make a thousand dollars a deal. And I knew I could sell anywhere from eight to 10 of those a week. So I knew if I went out there and I sold 10 a week, I was making 10 grand a week. That's $40,000 a month. Basically I now had to pivot and go back to work and knocking doors while I still had these businesses. And then I had to have my dad move to Gilbert, another pivot. Yeah. And I had to pay to get him out there, move him out there, have him run my gym because I couldn't trust nobody. You were helping out as well. And now I'm back out working a full-time job, six, seven days a week, knocking doors to keep my gym alive. And after I moved back and everything just to do that. Yeah. Talk yeah. about a humble experience and then going back to that. Uh, exactly. And then did that for a long period of time, still doing it to this day. I want to, Blake said, uh, broke on a higher level <laughs> if, you, if you understand what i say right now you will switch your way of thinking right wealthy people make products to keep rich people rich so how come rich people aren't wealthy because they keep buying the lambos they keep buying the houses they keep buying the cars the yachts the jets who makes the cars the yachts the jets the lambos the roll the rollies wealthy people do right so wealthy people create po products to keep rich people rich 
rich people do the same thing. We create products to, you know, keep broke people broke. You know, hopefully you guys aren't doing that and everything. We actually create <laughs> products to help you guys create success. Yeah, so we, we make the shift in this culture and everything, you know. Um, but to kind of bring everything to an end. Yeah. Um, my only thing is, man, just really take those in because those are my lessons. There's still a lot more, and me and Mike are going to get more into this stuff and more dive deeper into it because we only got through to the to the fifth, fourth company. We still got some more to talk about. But <laughs> we really want you guys to know this, man, because I know a lot of you guys are out there. You're trying to figure this out. You're trying to trying to make it, you want to become successful. You just don't know how it is. You know how to get there, but I would love to help you miss some of those potholes and not make some of the same mistakes that I did not think the way I did. Because if I, if, if I could go back and change that, I'd probably be a lot further in life than I am today. But just so you know, I would never take any of it back because those lessons is what gave me the <clears throat> wisdom that I have through the experiences that I've taken. And it's now who I am today. And I'm very clear. I know who I am, where I'm going, my calling, and I know my mission. And our mission is to impact over 1 billion lives with our education platform. So all I got to say is take the advice, notate it, implement yep. it, and uh, don't, don't, don't do some of the things that I did because you can get a lot, you get ahead a lot faster than I did if, if, if you do. So yeah, drop some questions in the comments too. something we, we got to be more active with you guys. So if you guys hear things in any of these episodes, feel free to drop comments because we do reply back to the comments when we do get them. So we, like we said, we want to help you. We want to be involved. If this is your first time or you're returning to listening to the podcast, please share it with a friend. Please share it with a family member, somebody that you want to help, you know, improve their life, which I hope is everybody around you. And look, if, if your environment isn't right, you got to shift to a new environment. So follow the FGMB podcast everywhere. Um, FGM Hub is the main company account you guys could get access to our success tools to help you guys create new success habits in your life. So that way we could take you to the next level and help you actually shift and create your ideal life. So stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you guys soon.